In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the company Orkla, the biggest Norwegian consumer goods company. This is a story of a company that felt the need to redesign the business models that was wrapped around their products and services. In part, they wanted to create more circular solutions. In part, they wanted to pr produce more sustainable products. And importantly, they wanted to facilitate greener consumer lifestyles among their customers. Orkla is an example of a company who produces the things that we need every single day. The food that we eat, uh, the soap that we wash our hands with, shampoo that some of us <laughs> wash their, their hair with, etc. Uh, etc. Et and one of the problems they had was plastic and the use of single-use plastic. Packaging is an important part of products and the products themselves and the packaging of the products both have important footprints. And an important driver for the need for new business models in Orkla has been the rise of the plastic problem. They realized that the plastic problem was gaining the attention of consumers and they understood that in the future it will be likely that consumers would expect companies to produce less plastic. At the same time, Orkla is under pressure from international competitors, uh, from completely different kinds of players like Amazon for instance, uh, that will in the future deliver products in competition with Orkla. This means that for a company like this, the future is probably going to look different. Will we be shopping in stores as we do today or will it be more online based shopping? Will we be buying the products in single use packaging or will it be distributed in some other way? And what could be the solution to how can you solve the problem of single use plastic? Uh, is refilling uh, an option? Would you go to the store and refill your shampoo bottle? Or do you want people to come home to you and, and refill the bottle at your place? These are exactly the kinds of questions that Orkla is asking itself right now. How should they think about the consumer behavior of the future? So Orkla are trying to do something difficult. On the one hand, they're trying to create the circular solutions, if you will, for the future. This could be refill stations, it could be home delivery solutions, and so on. And on the other hand, they're trying to figure out what happens inside the minds of people like you and me when we think about these kinds of solutions. Would we be willing, like Sinung says, to do this? Or is there some entirely different way that would be more attractive for consumers? This is the practical innovation challenge that companies like Orkla are facing right now. So the bottle is, is one part of the problem. Plastic is one part of the problem. But what is the content uh, in, in the shampoo? Can they change the, the content? Would, and, and what would we think? Would, would we think that it's just as effective as it used to be when it's greener or sustainable? We don't know, and they don't know. So you have to experiment with this and you have to try out new ways of, of, of making, making the shampoo or the soap or, or the food that they provide or whatever. One such experiment in Orkla was the Klar product line. Klar is a new, innovative product line with all sorts of cleaning products for your body and for your house. And it cannibalizes on the existing product lines of Orkla. What is special, however, about the Klar product series is that it has a lot of sustainability-related characteristics. The plastic is recycled, the content is vegan and free of uh, harmful substances that might otherwise be in cleaning products, and also other characteristics of these products make them more sustainable than the alternatives. By introducing Klar, they've made changes to the bottles, which are recycled and recyclable, and they've also made changes to the content uh, of the soap and so on. But that's just one part of it, because if, it, if they're going to start thinking as these products as services, how are they going to deliver this to the customer? One of the managers in Orkla said when we spoke to him that what we sell, it's really clean plates and clean clothes. So the soap is just a way of doing that. In theory, he said, we could be selling cleaning services. 
This is a crucial starting point for thinking about the business model, because what kinds of solutions are really customers after? And what are the kinds of things that Urkla could alternatively be doing and still making their customers happy while making a profit? Urkla wants to become circular. Uh, today, it's, it's a part of, uh, call it a, a more linear value chain, where the next uh, partner in, in that value chain is the re retail sh stores. That's where you and I go and pick up our food, our, our soap and the other things that we need. So how are they going to collaborate? How, how are they going to make a partnership and have a value proposition to the retail stores as well? And what Sveinung is pointing at here is a tricky challenge when you're thinking about innovation. Because at the same time that Urkla is trying to innovate, the retail stores that they rely on are also innovating. So Urkla, much like other companies, don't really know what kind of future they are entering and what kind of future they are part of developing. So when we talk about sustainable business model innovations here, we're not only talking about the sustainability part or the responsibility part. We're talking about business, we're talking about strategy, economics, marketing, uh, behavioral science. because. How will the customers react? How will uh, the competitors react? How should they go about to, to make attractive products that are both sustainable and uh, effective? So there's so many uh, questions to be asked. Uh, and there's so many uh, things that a company like Orkla need to, to understand in order to design and redesign their business model. In this video, We've looked into an example of a company that tries to carry out the sustainable business model innovation in practice. As we've seen, this requires them understanding properly what is it that they do for their consumers and how could they alternatively do it? What would be the alternative ways of producing the products that they sell? What would be alternative ways of distributing that to consumers? And how can you trigger consumer behavior that can also help the company facilitate more uh, sustainable lifestyles. I want to add to that, Lars Jakob, because they also need to find new ways of capturing value. From a transactional model where they sell one and one product, uh, to a more relational uh, model uh, where they perhaps then deliver, give access to services through a subscription model. For Orkla and for similar companies, it's unclear what the future of consumer goods and the future of retail will look like. But it's clear that on the company side, there will be big changes in product design and distribution and what the stores look like. And on the consumer side, there's also likely to be changes. And the trick is to get these two things to fit together, to create the solutions that can facilitate the sustainable consumer behavior of the future.